Welcome to the Mid-Ohio Valley Public Forum video podcast. <laughs> These interviews are focusing on the Vienna City races. Uh, there are a uh, mayoral race, a council race, and the recorder race. Tonight, we're going to speak with Kelly Sassy Craft, who is running for Vienna City Council. Uh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> with that, let's dive right in. Give us your best one minute uh, short introduction. Okay. Um, I moved to Vienna when I was in high school. I got my very first job at Vienna Foodland while I was in high school. That's where I met my husband. Um, we've been married for 34 years. We raised three children here in Vienna. Um, we coached several um, different teams through Vienna Rec as well th as through the county soccer program for Wood County. Um, we, I've worked in Vienna. I still work in Vienna, a, a pharmacy here in Vienna. And then um, we attend church in Vienna. We're just very community oriented with our family here. Um, everything that we do, work-wise, church, schools, has always been in Vienna. So I just feel very close to the community. What would you say is the main reason that you decided to step up and run for office now? Um, I've just seen locally that our city government needs to be more transparency with the citizens. Um, a lot of things that are going on and have been going on, it's just not brought to the public's attention. And I wanna get that back for the people. Um, I also want to kind of, nothing bad against the council now, but there's some people that have been on there for 34 years. You know, it's time for a change. It's time for new ideas, get new blood in there. Um, give other people a chance to step up and take leadership roles. How have you kept yourself in the loop concerning the actions of the Vienna city government up until this point? Um, here lately, I started going to the city council meetings um, last year um, when I really started thinking about this is what I want to do. Um, I wanted to see from the sidelines, you know, how things were run, what they're, what's happening. Is it something that I really want to do and feel compassion about? And I talked it over with my husband and my schedule isn't the best. And he said, when are we gonna have time to do that? <laughs> and I just felt so compassionate about wanting to be the voice of the people and bring government back to the people and get it away from self agendas. So, I, I just it, very compassionate about it. What would you see as the three largest, uh, most pressing issues um, facing the city of Vienna right now? Only three? Yeah, you got to <laughs> narrow it down to three. <laughs> we can't do an hour long or three hour long interview. Nobody would watch it. <laughs> okay. I would say the the first and second one, are probably as equal as important to, in my eyes. Um, the Manville properties that the city has acquired um, would be one of the top two in my eyes that we as citizens need to be concerned about and address, you know, where are we going with this? Um, a lot of the citizens, it, it's not being brought to their attention what is the process and what's going on and how far deep into it are we? Um, the second thing is infrastructure. Um, our city water lines are so outdated. Um, one incident in one weekend, a Friday through Sunday, there were 12 water line breaks in one street. You know, 
we need to upkeep those. Um, with that, the water lines, the streets, and how many streets in Vienna do not have sidewalks? We are the most highest city with people walking just for exercise and not particularly just going anywhere, just for recreational use. And I think the citizens deserve the safety of the sidewalks that they could use. Um, the last one would probably be growth. You know, where, where are we in growth where we were 10 years ago? Have we grown any, you know, what's our next 10 year plan? So those would be the top three, if I have enough three. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I know, it's really hard to narrow it down to three. Um, if you're elected, what one issue um, would you most, you know, if you, if you had to narrow it down to one now, that you mm. would want to really put uh, a lot of effort into uh, addressing, which would that be? Where would your focus be? Um, Probably prioritizing the infrastructure. Um, you know, what, what's more important with the future of Vienna is, you know, the water lines. We have to have safe water. We have to have sewer. We have to have drainage problem issues resolved. Um, that would probably be my first one. And, and when we go into that, we need to figure out, okay, we need to prioritize, you know, are we gonna dig up this water line after we paved the road the year before? That doesn't make sense. You know, you've only laid the road for a year and you're digging it up because of a water line break. So we need to focus on, you know, where's the bad repairs? Are we due to pave that road? And if we are, can we hold off until we get the repair work that we need to update for the water? So something like that, we probably should look at first. Listen to me. I said, we, if I get elected. <laughs> All of this is working on that assumption. <laughs> um, so some of the worst partisan battles in our history have happened in our very recent past. Yeah. Um, while C Vienna city government is nonpartisan, um, how do you feel about compromise and your ability to work together with people of differing backgrounds and mindsets? Mm -hmm. um, that's funny. One of the other um, ladies that's running for council, we talked about that one night after one of the council meetings. And, um, and we are not from the same party. And I'm not a big party person. Um, I hate labeling whether it's Democrat or Republican or independent, that, that's not what being in this type of position should represent. We are here for the people and the people aren't specifically in those categories and we shouldn't have to hone them in there. We need to work for them as neighbors, relatives, friends, family, and, and get away from the labeling and be there to work for the people. And I'm just, you know, I, I hate putting labels on stuff like that. How do you see the job of Vienna City Council person changing in our current and hopefully soon past COVID-19 world? <sighs> COVID-19. <laughs> um, I have some really personal feelings about the COVID. Um, they're not popular. Um, the city has done their job um, going by the guidelines set by the state, the CDC, the federal. Um, they've done their part. Um, with that said, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> what would you say are your personal core values? Wow. Can I list more than three? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am a very compassionate person. 
Um, I, when I, I feel strongly about something, that's when I put my whole heart into it. Um, and that's something that I want to bring to the council. Um, I just came from a council meeting and I, I hate to say this, I was ashamed. I was ashamed of what went on tonight. Um, WTAP was there uh, videotaping it and the citizens won't see what truly happened at that meeting. And I hate to say I was ashamed, but I was. And we need to get past our personal feelings and our personal beliefs when we're sitting in those seats. Um, and and you have to be able to hone those things in when you're sitting in that position. And I hate to say that, you know, I, I'm gonna hone in my compassion, but you gotta hone in your own personal compassion. Your compassion for something that the citizens want is what needs to be represented there. Um, other things, I, I'm a very faithful person. Um, faith in my life is very important to me. Um, the belief systems that I was grown up in is very strong in my personality. Um, I'm very family oriented. My family is very important to us. Um, we're very close. Um, I have three children to live out of state. Um, they are our lives. My husband and I take our days off from work to go spend vacations with them. And it's just, it, it's very, and that's the thing about this community that I love is that if you're not related to a lot of the people in Vienna, you know them through your relatives because it's such a small community and you're friends with people. And you might not know their name, but you recognize them because you see them walking down your street every day with the dog or you know their family. So um, leadership would be another one. I, um, I kind of, I don't say I, I run things, <laughs> but I tend to, if I'm given a job, I step up to the plate and do the job. Um, I feel that's what I'm there to do. That's what I need to do. So those are a few things that are a little about my personality and who I am. As a city council person for Vienna, you would be a visible ambassador for the city. Tell me what you would say to someone when they ask what you're most proud of about Vienna. I think I'll go back to the, the community thing. Um, we're such a tight knit community. Um, I can walk down a lot of the majority of the streets and um, know someone on that street or recognize on that street. So um, the, the closeness of this community is something that's really beautiful to me. Okay, with that, let's move into our rapid fire hot seat questions. These are meant to be really uh, short, kind of um, to the point answers, um, but this is a big question, so it may be hard to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your understanding of the city's current financial situation, uh, especially with the added complications that COVID-19 has brought? Um, we, we have talked about that at a couple of the city council meetings, um, seeing where um, the revenue from the businesses are obviously going to be lower than what they were last year um, due to businesses being closed down, um, you know, people not frequenting places. Some of them have closed. So it's definitely going to affect the city. Um, at this point, um, we were told that it would be discussed at a later time. So obviously it's gonna affect them, but at, at high 
we're not sure at what cost it will affect us. Um, so we're just kind of waiting to see where it comes out next month. They're supposed to present the treasurer's um, information next month. Uh, the C8 water issues and filtration project long term. Long term. Um, Hmm. And I even live right across the street from the one tank they put in. Um, well, I know that there's an agreement with um, one of the local chemical companies. They put in the filtration system. Right. Um, one of the questions I heard from uh, Vienna residents when I took a poll um, on, on, you know, issues that they wanted their council to address um, the, the concern that I heard most often was, um, what does that project look like down the road? Uh, is it budgeted in if at some point that company says they've completed the filtration system and now the water is okay? Um, would Vienna at that point have to uh, find it in the budget to continue to do that filtration? Would they stop? Um, that is something that hasn't really been addressed publicly. Um, and I know they kind of danced around it at a couple of the city council meetings. But like I said, they danced, danced around it to where you don't get a true feeling for an answer, especially long term. Um, that's something that's very disappointing to me. Um, as a citizen that is just sitting there observing the meetings that, you know, you have a concern like this and with water, that's a, a main concern. Um, and, and to get a dance around response, um, we, we need transparency. We need to communicate with the citizens and give them the answers they need. And, and that's one thing that I'm very disappointed in. Um, how about making Vienna a more welcoming and inclusive place for all current and future residents? Repeat that again. <laughs> making Vienna a more welcoming and inclusive place for all current and future residents. Um, uh, I know I've heard you mention, um, you know, that if you know one person in town, you know quite a few. Yeah. Um, but we have several um, places of employment in the MOV. Um, mm -hmm. We get hospitals, uh, fiscal services downtown, um, Highmark, and, and others who bring in workers um, mm -hmm. to our area who are new residents who may not be from here, who may not have ties here. Um, so that's something that we've seen across our area uh, that um, is a concern. How do we um, make our cities uh, welcoming and open to, to new residents as well as those who have been here for a good long time? <laughs> Vienna's got some things that they're um, they're in the process of working on, and one of them is um, a walking trail in Vienna with um, uh, little plaques. Um, you'll walk for maybe twelve blocks, and there'll be something, some a house or a tree or something, something specific to that um, area. And it will describe about that, whether it's a house that had been there since the 1900s or um, you know, a tree that was planted by someone. And that plaque will represent and tell that person about that. And it's supposed to be, I forget how many miles um, the trek will be around the city of Vienna. Um, it could take you up different avenues and places, but they, um, are in conjunction with Vienna Baptist Church, I believe, is the one um, that donated some of the land to put some the starting point of that. 
um, it's a really neat program. Um, like I said, you know, you can go out and walk the streets of Vienna and just literally, especially since COVID, um, and meet anybody you, you haven't seen in ages. Um, you know, this is a neat community where it is walkable. Um, and it, it's something that the city is um, going to facilitate and use more of. You know, the, the best way to get out there and to see people and meet people is, is walking your dog or walking with your family, riding bikes. Um, I know some people have mentioned about making uh, River Road in Vienna a bike road only. And um, unfortunately, it's not a road that the city owns. It's outside of the city limits, so there's nothing we can do with that. But um, I, you, the city has some good ideas. Um, we just need to implement them. Um, because of the COVID this year, last year, um, well, for the last two years, I think, they've worked on family nights at Spencer Park. They had movie nights. Um, during the day, they had um, all kinds of different programs and art things for the kids. And then they came back that night for a movie night. Um, it was a great way to get the whole community there. So, you know, they, they've got some things out there that they're working on. It's just, unfortunately, with this pandemic, it, it hasn't worked too well. Yeah, it's a, it looks like it's a problem everywhere. Um, yeah. So you mentioned this a little bit. Um, uh, expanding or creating bike lanes or trails. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the council in Vienna just um, has been dealing with the use of golf carts on, on city roads. Um, <laughs> so uh, I guess in a greater sense, it would be expanding non-traditional forms of transportation. <laughs> yeah, um, that was a big discussion tonight. <laughs> um, Again, a very disappointing show of uh, where personal feelings and issues got in the way of what the citizens want again. Um, it, I personally have no yes or no to that. The state has already adopted an ordinance allowing that Grand Central Avenue is not a road, a, a city road. It is owned by the state. We have no control over that. So already it's a, you're able to drive a golf cart and an ATV on there as long as it's licensed. So, you know, I'm not gonna say I'm for it or against it uh, personally, because again, it's not about what I think we should do. It's what the people want. And, you know, the only way you're going to hear that is ask the people what they want. Well, one of the things that came up quite often in my discussions with Vienna residents was uh, street flooding. Um, I know when I moved to the area six years ago, we lived in the city of Vienna and it was an issue on my street and it seems like it's an issue for a lot of people. Um, what, do you, what do you think about that? that? Is that something you hear? And what do you think needs to be done about it? Um, we have heard from several citizens, several different meetings that I attended. Um, they brought pictures, they brought videos on their phones and put it up on the projector. I mean, it is a problem. Um, are we handling it well? In my opinion, no, we're not. Um, is it going to be costly? Yes, it is. But then we go back to prioritizing what we need to do for the citizens and for the city and infrastructure. You know, if we take care of the storm drains and uh, the water lines, you know, a lot of this can be taken care of. Um, one of the streets, you know, Randy went into detail about what would be done. Yes, it's going to cost money, but 
you don't have a city without your citizens. And, you know, we need to prioritize, you know, are we going to sink another 100,000, another million dollars into Manville property? Or do we need to really say, okay, we have several parks. Let's hold off on sinking more money into this and let's start taking care of the roads and the sewer and the drains and stuff like that. I mean, we really need to prioritize because it is a problem. <laughs> well, with that, uh, I'd like to give you a few minutes to tell me and the voters anything you think we may have missed that you feel like we need to know about you or your campaign, including how to get in contact with you, uh, get a, a yard sign, how to get involved, uh, etc. Okay, I do have yard signs. Um, I actually had to order more, which is a good thing, but a bad thing because it costs really a lot of money. <laughs> but um, I did get them in, so I do have more yard signs. Um, I actually take them to work with me. I'm at Dutton's Pharmacy. Um, several people have stopped by the pharmacy to pick up signs there. Um, if you want to private message me, I have a Facebook page that my daughter and her friend set up for me. Um, it's Kelly Saucy Craft, City of Vienna Council. Um, so you can contact me on that um, site um, or any time that we're in opening at uh, Dutton's Pharmacy is fine. Uh, my owner, the boss, the pharmacist is my treasurer, so he's backing me in this. <laughs> so, um, other than that, you know, we, we just need to get this back to the people. Um, it, it's not a personal agenda. It's not serving in any capacity for 40 years. Um, I can't imagine doing something for 40 years and having fresh new ideas with it. Um, we, I know Vienna people hate the word change, but, but we do need a change. Um, we need to grow as a city. And I, I just feel like we haven't done that here in the last couple of years. So, you know, I'm compassionate and whether you vote for me or not, um, please just vote for change. Um, it, it's, like I said, it's not personable. personal. It's, you know, we need, I think there's 12 of us running for five seats. Um, so we just need to get different people in there and vote for who you think is going to do the job you want them to do. I guess that's it. <laughs> Okay. Well, we, I appreciate your time and your interest in serving your city. Uh, good luck with your candidacy. We hope you stay safe and well. Uh, and everyone, wash your hands. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>